Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. In exercise number 7, part alpha, on page 254 of Mars and Hoffman, we are asked to find all of the singular points for f of z equal to 1 over the product of z cubed and z plus 4. Upon doing so, we will then be required to determine the residues at those same points. The denominator is already pretty well factored for us, and it's easy to see that it goes to 0 at z equals 0 and z equals negative 4. If you have any further questions about identifying the zeros in the, in the denominator, then you're welcome to consult Wolfram Alpha, or you know what? Just hit me up in the comments. Even if it's a dumb question, even if you need relationship advice, whatever. This is YouTube, and engagement drives ad revenue. So we will be calculating two separate residues in this problem, f of z at z0 equals 0, and f of z at z0 equals negative 4, and we will begin with the former. We will be using proposition 416 on page 248 for calculation of both of the residues in this video. Although we're not required to do so, I'd like to pause and examine the behavior for the denominator of f of z. In the case of z0 equals 0, if we refer to the denominator as h of z and crunch the first three derivatives, then we can see that h of z0 and the first two derivatives evaluated at z0 are all 0. The third derivative, however, when evaluated at z0, is equal to 24, and this shows that we're dealing with a pole of the third order at z0. I did this in order to show, in the case where you feel unsure about a given pole, that the derivatives and a Taylor expansion will show you the order of the pole in question. Proposition 416 gives us an alternative to rigorously evaluating the denominator of f of z. If we let phi of z equal z minus z naught to the k times f of z, then k is the smallest non-zero integer such that the limit of z minus z naught to the k times f of z exists. In this case, the residue, according to Proposition 416, becomes the following expression, where k minus 1 is the order of the derivative of phi evaluated at z0. So for the case of z0 equals 0, we are looking at a required value of k equals 3 for the aforementioned limit to exist. Inserting for k, z0, and f of z, we find that z minus nothing to the third cancels with its counterpart in the denominator, and two derivatives later, we have 1 over z plus 4 to the third power. Evaluating this at z equals 0 gives us 1 over 64. The simple pole at z0 equals minus 4, along with its corresponding residue, almost feels like a waste of time at this point, but I will throw it up on the screen just for love of the game. I'm not going to bother with the derivatives that I calculated for the previous value of z0. If anyone has questions about the nature of the 0 at z0 equals minus 4, then hit me up in the doobly-doo. Going back to the limit mentioned in Proposition 416, k equals 1 is both non-zero and gives us a limit that exists when z0 equals negative 4. Thus, if we plug k equals 1, z0 equals minus 4, and the function f of z into the residue formula that we just used, then we see that we don't even need calculus in order to evaluate it. k minus 1 becomes 0, and we need only to evaluate phi of z0 at z0 equals 4. The z plus 4 terms cancel on top and bottom, and we are left with negative 1 over 64 for the residue, and I hope that Better Call Saul Season 6 lives up to the hype. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.